In 1768, Jacobus, also known as James, and his family moved from New Jersey, where the Westerfelts originally settled, to Conewago Colony, Pennsylvania, near Gettysburg, with the first colony of the Dutch Reformed Church. Other of our ancestors also moved to Conewago, including Samuel and Leo Demarest, Maria's parents. In the spring of 1779, the Westerfelts joined the Banta migration that was headed to Kentucky. This group of pioneers traveled down the Ohio River and arrived at the Beargrass area east of present-day Louisville on April 6, 1780. Jacobus purchased 400 acres of land near Harrodstown, Kentucky. On June 26, 1780, he led a group of 41 people from 10 families to what was to be their new home. Before sunrise on the 27th, the group was attacked by Indians. Ten of the 17 people killed were Westerfield family members. Jacobus was one of those killed by the Indians. His daughter Deborah and her cousin Polly were captured by the Indians and later sold as slaves in Detroit. This account of the story was written in 1865 by H.R. Stafford. My grandfather, James Westerfield, was a large man weighing 333 pounds. Himself and family left Berkeley County, Virginia about 1780 and immigrated to Kentucky by way of Pittsburgh to Louisville, intending to go to Herod Station in now Mercer County, Kentucky. Him and company of about 30 persons started from Louisville to the station. They camped for the night on the waters of Beargrass, about 12 miles out, and sometime in the night was attacked by a party of Indians while asleep, and but few escaped death. The old man, James Westerfield, and two of his daughters, among the number killed. The old lady, Marie Demery, his wife, saved three children by hiding them in a sinkhole, one child in her arms and two under her clothes to keep them from crying. My mother, then single, also escaped to a fort not far off, but owing to the alarm, with difficulty got in. Those that were prisoners were separated a little way from each other until they could find out which was capable to travel, and those unfit to travel was tomahawked and scalped. One woman sitting by, on seeing one of her children, one after another slain, they went to take her infant out of her arms. Her fortitude gave way. She held on to the child, screaming for its safety, and was killed on the spot by the hatchet and scout. They took the infant and killed it. They then took such as the others as they intended to take with them, and ripped open the beds, scattering the feathers, gathering their plunder, and left. After killing the old man, they seemed to think that they had killed a giant. Three buttoned themselves up in his big coat and danced. Deborah Westerfield and her cousin Polly, taken off prisoners to Detroit, then sold to the French as servants, was badly treated and by the sympathy of the same, sold into another family. They remained until exchanged and finally got home to surviving friends. While in captivity at about that same time, the old lady, Maria, was taken on her return from a French's house had her horse shot out from under her and taken not far from Checking Station in now Shelby County, Kentucky. Taken a few miles off, they secured for the night until they could steal some horses for their journey. They came back before day with the horses, gave her her choice, the back of which she knew well. She put on her saddle and when ready mounted and took off for Detroit in great hope of meeting with her daughters and cousin Polly Westerfield but to her disappointment, they were released and gone home east. She remained there about one year and finally got back. I omitted to state that after the horses were killed, she was made to run and pack her saddle about four miles onto a creek in the hills called Batkin, all of which is respectfully narrated as I learned it. <laughs>